the Nutcracker is the Olympics of ballet. Even people who actively dislike sport watch the Olympics and are moved by the dedication, the pageantry, and the physical skill. For the participants, it's the fulfillment of a lifelong dream, and exactly the same can be said for the Nutcracker. But no one expected a children's fairy tale to become the world's best-known ballet. Funding for the story of carols provided by Jim and Betty Holthauser in honor of their parents, Alfred and Betty Marie Pence, and Norman and Patricia Holthauser. Everyone's heard of Tchaikovsky. His 1812 overture is a staple at Fourth of July fireworks celebrations across America, and his ballet The Nutcracker has become a seasonal tradition. But it wasn't well received when it premiered. One reviewer said the ballet was completely devoid of creativity. And the critic with the St. Petersburg Gazette called it the most tedious thing he'd ever seen. The ballet's libretto is based on The Nutcracker and the Mouse King by General Thomas Alexander Dumas, the father of the author who gave us The Three Musketeers and The Count of Monte Cristo. Dumas is said to have adapted it on the spot for a children's party, but the story is, in fact, based on an earlier tale by E.T.A. Hoffman. Hoffman was born in Prussia, studied law, became a civil servant. His avocation, though, was the arts. He composed music, painted, and wrote literature. He also drank heavily, trading the rights to his first book for a cellar of wine. The Dumas adaptation of The Mouse King is much milder than the original Hoffman tale. The story we know today tells of a young girl, Clara, who falls asleep on Christmas Eve and dreams that she's reduced to the size of the toy Nutcracker that her brother Fritz had broken earlier in the evening. She and the Nutcracker, who comes to life as a prince, go on an adventure. Ultimately, they defeat the Mouse King and are carried away to the prince's kingdom. On the way, Clara experiences a parade of nations highlighting all the wonders of the world. Spanish chocolate stands for her as does Arabian coffee, Chinese tea, candy canes, and snowflakes. They eventually arrive at the Marzipan Castle and meet the Sugar Plum Fairy, who mends the Nutcracker and sends Clara back to her own bed, safe and sound. When Tchaikovsky began composing the Nutcracker score in 1892, he hated it, calling it all ugliness in a letter to his brother. Another legendary tale suggests that he wrote the Sugar Plum Fairy Pas de Deux on a bet that he couldn't write a melody descending straight down the major scale. Whether or not there was a wager, a descending major scale underscores the ballet's denouement. The original production premiered at the Imperial Mariinsky Theater in St. Petersburg, Russia on December 17, 1892. Stanislava Belinskaya was the original Clara. The Italian ballerina Antonetta Dellara played the Sugar Plum Fairy, and Sergei Legat was the original Nutcracker Prince. When the Russian Revolution began in 1905, members of the Mariinsky Company began to flee their home nation, and the Nutcracker went with them. The first full-length North American production took place in San Francisco, 1944. The best-known American production came a decade later, when George Balanchine, who had danced the Nutcracker at the Mariinsky Theater as a boy, mounted the New York City Ballet's production in 1954. The Balanchine production was broadcast on Christmas night, 1957, taking ballet into America's living room. Today, most ballet companies have a love-hate relationship with the production. They tire of doing it, but the annual holiday event generates enough revenue to sustain the company throughout the rest of the year. And 60 years of repetition has Americanized and democratized the Nutcracker. It's a ballet enjoyed at once by socialites and blue-collar workers, parents and children, professionals, and local dance studios. The Nutcracker has survived and sustained through revolution, immigration, and assimilation to become an American tradition.